Hi, this is Dr. Bustai, and welcome to an episode of High Yield Med Review's sponsored uh, discussion on the core pharmacology and what are the differences in uh, methylprednisolone. So the question for today is, what are those differences in the methylprednisolone products? And we have three. We have a tablet, uh, which is an oral formulation, a methylprednisolone acetate, and also methylprednisolone succinate. So what are their differences, and why do I pick one over the other? How do we use them in clinical practice? And so I'd like to, over the next minute or two here, go over this table and fill in some of the different variables so that you can sort of see them side by side, uh, what makes them um, similar, but what makes them also different. So this column is arranged by over here. We have the name, the formulation over here on the side, uh, the general dosing, onset, duration, and then sort of the dosage formulation of the product itself. Uh, then we have the, uh, this is going to be our oral, this is our acetate formulation, and then this is the methylprednisolone succinate. And so when you look at the methylprednisolone tablet formulation, it's just methylprednisolone. It's a tablet, obviously administered by mouth, varies ranges from 4 to 48 milligrams, onset of about 2 to 4 hours, and can uh, last about 1 to 2 days. Now, is it an active or an inactive metabolite that needs to be activated? It is already active. There is no metabolism like with prednisone that has to occur in order for it to get active in the most common uh, formulation is the Medrol dose pack, which comes pre-packaged, as you can see here, with the tablets in a sort of a tapering format. And so that's the Medrol dose pack, which is plain old methyl prednisolone. Methylprednisolone acetate is what is called Depo-Medrol. And the Depo has to do with the fact that it is a suspension, okay, making it unique, uh, which means that it can only be given by IM or intra lesional injection or interarticular injection is also what is also used in practice. And so we see that I am intraarticular onset is about three to five days and you can see that that's much different than the onset of action of plain old methylprednisolone which is just a couple hours. Um, so there's a delayed onset and the clinical relevance of that delayed onset is that you have to give them something in the interim for that first day or two and sometimes you need to give a drug like dexamethasone or even prednisone or something that will kick in a little earlier or even methylprednisolone tablets until this drug kicks in if you were to use it I am but the nice benefit is you can pretty much give them one shot and it sticks around for as high as up to uh, several weeks depending on the route of administration obviously longer for articular versus I am but it can last for several weeks and create its own treatment without having to get a prescription filled and have to take the medication on a daily basis Again, it's also active form, and it is, uh, you can see that in the dosage formulation. It's a suspension has to be reconstituted. The last formulation is um, methylprednisolone um, succin uh, sodium uh, succinate, which is solumedrol, which is more common, what people recognize in clinical practice. Um, also, one of the drugs that's probably studied a little bit more in some of the acute pulmonary exacerbation condition, asthma, COPD. Um, but it is a solution, and as a result of being a solution, it can be given both IM and IV. So it's the only one of the forms that can be given intravenously. Uh, methylprednisolone acetate is only IM or intraarticular, on occasions intralesional. Um, but uh, you can see the onset is about two to four hours, which is not far off from the tablet formulation, but it doesn't last as long as we see with the acetate formulation. So it has to be given over repetitive doses, um, which is why you see that uh, dosing used in clinical practice that way. So are there any adverse, adverse effects so that sometimes occur with IM injections of methylprednisolone? And so one of the common things that people cite is the fat atrophy or the skin and or skin hypopigmentation that can sometimes occur. And, and you can see that the skin and fat atrophy can occur up to 64% of patients based on the evidence. Skin hypopigmentation can occur up to 54%. So just over a little half of patients will experience this side effect. Now, where is the location and the risk that seems to be most commonly cited? Well, superficial injection sites are where over infiltration where the drug leaks out into the, um, really maybe not into the muscle, but more of the subcutaneous tissue that seems to um, cause that effect. And so we tend to avoid exposed areas like the deltoid so that, you know, cosmetically people don't see a, some defect in, the, in their skin or in the muscle that would draw attention to it. So we, you know, we put it in place 
places where people won't commonly see it. What is the average onset for the development of this um, adverse effect? Well, it can take several weeks. Um, so it's usually delayed. It's not an acute thing, but you know, you look at about one and a half to you know three months um, down the road, you can start to see that. And the next question that people want to know is, well, does it ever go away? Well, in some cases it can, but not in everybody, and it can be a permanent side effect. And that's why it's something to definitely tell the patient something to warn them about, um, so that you um, you know don't get them upset if they were to have this uh, effect without being told. So, what are some of the high yield core concepts? of this topic discussion on methylprednisolone. Well, the first is that it comes in three dosage forms and you should be able to recognize the differences now. We have the tablet, which is plain old methylprednisolone tablets, um, and it usually comes as medrol dose pack. We have the methylprednisolone acetate, which is that depot injection because you're giving it only IM or intra-articular or intralesional, but you are not gonna give this drug IV, right? Long delayed onset of action, but lasts a long time. That's its big benefit. Uh, whereas me methylprednisolone sodium succinate, this is in a solution that can be given IV or IM. Doesn't it takes a few hours to kick in, and but only lasts for a day or two, just like the methylprednisolone uh, tablet. Um, obviously, the acetate is the one that's sometimes used, and when you look at it in the context of asthma, it uh, has been studied against prednisone, and so a single dose for at least like an adult, 240 milligrams IM injection, there's no need to discharge the patient home on anything, and so that's why sometimes clinicians like this option, especially if patients can't afford their medications or are maybe going to be non-compliant. And then lastly, don't forget the fat atrophy and the skin hypopigmentation risk. It does happen, and it's just a little bit over half of the patients that can't experience it. And remember, it's a little bit delayed and sometimes doesn't go away. So uh, hopefully you found this to be useful. If you did, please feel free to share it with your friends and your colleagues who might also find it useful. Um, and the whole point of why I do these is to one keep learning you know to keep it fun easy to understand these concepts uh, make it clinically relevant of course base it on the evidence and uh, lastly make it oriented to the patient have a great day